podcast is on a softly spoken mission to help shy people be more mighty. Shy people don't need fixing. We don't need to change who we are. But in a world filled with noise and hot air, it's time for us to speak up and stop hiding. Hello and welcome to Shy and Mighty with me, Nadia Finer. And today I'm joined by my special guest, Natasha Tawari, who's the founder of the Vida Group. And Natasha's here to talk to us today about kids, shy kids, what to do if we are one, what to do if we've got one, and yeah, what it's like to be a shy kid and how we can overcome and the aspects of shyness which might be holding um, kids back. So welcome to the show, Natasha. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, I'm really glad you're here too. We had a bit of toing and froing to get this set up, mainly my fault, but we're here now. Yay! (laughs) (laughs) No, it's third time lucky. It was meant to be this way. (laughs) I think so too. We've got all the tech set up. It's all right. And we've got plenty of time. (laughs) So yeah, we're here today to talk about kids. So uh, Natasha, do you want to tell us um, a bit more about the Vida Group and the work that you do? Yeah, totally. So, um, so I'm a psychologist um, by training, um, and I also spent a short time um, as a classroom teacher. Uh, and it was it was a short time because I uh, I just it wasn't having the greatest time in the school that I was teaching in. It was um, it was probably like the worst of the worst of inner city schools, um, and it was also actually um, really quite corrupt which is something that I think most people associate with scenes from the wire but it it totally (laughs) happens in I wish I was joking it's so it's so real it it happens in inner city schools in London too um, and it was altogether just a really toxic environment to be in Um, and I'll actually I'll comment on the the impact of toxic environments on people who are sensitive um, while we're chatting but that was my first I guess initiation into education but also coming from a background where I had trained in psychology and neuroscience. And then as my career progressed, I continued my training in that in that regard. Um, and I went on to work with uh, children. And I found that one-on-one, I was able to get these really exponential um, results working with them. And, and I, I guess what I didn't realize at the time, but I, I understand now, is that I was then unconsciously competent about a methodology that I was using. Mm-hmm. Um that that piece of my story, I guess, is what's grown into the Vida Group. So we have now about 130 teachers around the world uh, using the methodology that I've created, which combines the best of theory around learning, um, but also child development and also child psychology. And uh, we will work with families when they're trying to win places in certain schools or if their kids are a bit older when they're looking at universities. Um, if their children are not achieving the grades that they think that their children are capable of because they're not getting the right attention in class, um, if they think that their child has something about them that makes them genius and they want that to be nurtured, um, or if their child is facing something like a, a special educational need or a mental health difficulty, and so then they also need a little bit of extra attention um, just to make sure that they're being nurtured correctly. I saw this really interesting thing today, actually, just before we spoke on Twitter, where someone had said, you know, the idea that children all learn differently is actually really insane. If that was true, then no teacher would be good at their job. And I was thinking about it and I was thinking it's true. I guess kids do learn more or less in the same way. But the thing that makes every child different is that they're wired differently. Mm -hmm. So whilst they might learn comparably or comparatively similarly, um, the way that they process information, the way that they integrate their learning experiences into their sense of who they are and who they want to become, that's the thing that makes every child different. And that's why when we look at a child for the human being that they are, and then we consider their learning from that perspective, I find um, we can get a significantly better result. It's um, it's fascinating, isn't it, that we are all different and yet... It seems to me that in society, when we behave or have different preferences um, to the status quo or to what's deemed to be 
acceptable. We can be kind of criticised or almost um, ostracised for not uh-huh. being the same as, as others, and yet we are all different. And I, I really think that shyness comes under... Um, under that umbrella you know it's a behavioral um pe- or personality kind of preference isn't it being shy is, is often the way we are as people yeah there's a lot of research out there um I won't be like boring and go into no be a the, bit like, boring be a bit boring go on <laughs> <laughs> you're like if, if I'm too boring then tell me but it's well there is there's just lots of research out there to say that um things that our personality traits can be quote unquote like coded by our genetic makeup and then our genetic expression Mm -hmm. but things like being shy are um, less common than the alternative Um, but if I think about what you just said about being ostracized though it's it's that other piece that we are we've evolved to be social animals and so if you're a little bit different yeah, we're evolved to treat the person who's a bit different as though they, they don't belong. And then if you already feel a bit different and people make you feel like you don't belong, then that has a, a spiral effect, which I think can be quite dangerous for children. I mm. think we really, I think shy adults, we laud them in, in society because it's really easy for us to immediately think of shy adults who have changed the world. But like you do said, you, when it's a shy child. So? Do you think Oh my so? gosh, Yeah. Okay, tell me more about that because you're the first person to tell me that. Um, really? Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so I think maybe it comes from the fact that I think I feel like I think with different hats on. So it's, sometimes I'll think with my psychologist hat on and sometimes I think with a, a teacher hat on and sometimes I'll think with an entrepreneur hat on because like I feel to business. And so, um, but maybe that's why I see it that way. Um, immediately it's so easy for me to think of people who have been called shy or socially awkward and I think those are two terms that get used interchangeably but have changed the world so immediately Mark Zuckerberg Mm -hmm. immediately I mean Facebook has just changed the way that I think almost every person on this planet interacts with their surroundings and and people in their orbit um Marissa Mayer uh, of Yahoo I think mm-hmm. that she's uh, she's spoken outwardly about the fact that she considers herself to be shy um okay well now I've said it I'm, I'm like trying to think of who yeah because I'm just I, I think um I personally oh my think that it's a superpower you know that when you're when you're spending less time speaking more time observing and thinking and listening and processing Um, and coming up with more considered solutions I feel like that's a strength Um, and and I'm imagining that a lot of people who've achieved amazing things whether or not they admit it um, they are they have a more kind of reserved or quieter personality or at least the ability to access that that part of their personality. So the person who I thought of just when I said I can't think of other Mm. other people was Greta Thunberg, (laughs) Thunberg, and it's insane to me, I didn't think of that before. She's a child who is for sure shy, you know, slash socially awkward. And I mean, I think that we'll be talking about her as a a shy child who changed the world for a long time to come. so yeah, I agree with you yeah, entirely about I the piece her... about. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, the piece about um, Sorry, it being about... a sort of a superpower, a superpower that you can harness. Yeah, and and, and I think it, that's it can the... it has the potential to change um, the world in amazing ways. I think if it's nurtured in the right way. Um, right. Do you do you see then? Um, that do a, do a lot of parents come to you worried about a child um their child who's who's shy i would say increasingly yes but they don't always see it as as uh, immediately calling it just shy so mm-hmm. i think shyness is interesting because especially in children i think it's true also for adults but especially in kids it presents really interestingly because um, often when somebody says that they have a shy child or somebody else says to that parent, oh, your child's so shy, 
the parent yeah. is like, what are you talking about? Because they're not shy at home. <laughs> yeah. At home, they're like, the, you know, the picture of an, like, not at all, a non-shy extroverted child. It's only when they're in a classroom environment or amongst big groups of people who they don't necessarily know that the shyness presents itself. And so I think that what I see more often is that when parents will say that they're worried that uh, they're being told that their child is shy, the shy bit's not what isn't what worries them what they worry about is that um it seems to be accompanied by some form of anxiety or stress around being around other people and that that's now Mm -hmm. affecting self-esteem and so it's like it's more the knock-on effect of not understanding how to navigate the shyness than the shyness itself yeah and do you think um, well I think that doesn't surprise me in terms of it being something which maybe a parent doesn't always see because I guess shyness is about comfortability, if that's a word, comfort. (laughs) And so when you're at home, you're around people that you know, obviously your family, your parents, in an environment that feels comfortable, so you're less likely to see it. But then perhaps in school or in a social situation, um, you're being pushed to do things that feel uncomfortable um, and therefore but that brings about fear and anxiety in certain situations. Um, So when the shyness is perhaps limiting the potential um, of the child, it's stopping them from achieving things which they're capable of doing underneath. Um, I guess that's when it becomes a problem. Right. So, I yeah, I agree that that's the point at which that it becomes problematic. I think also there's a piece that before that, and it's just about um, empowering. I think there's a piece for the adults who are supporting a shy child to know that there's something around empowering that child to not buy into perhaps the stories that exist in their head. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the thing, the thing for me that characterizes natural shyness is a natural tendency to fall into feeling self-conscious when you're around people that you don't know or an environment that is hard to navigate. And then also anticipating rejection in a much bigger way than is necessary. And I guess that's why anxiety will play into being shy because it just makes you more likely to feel anxious. And if you feel that anxiety often enough, that will become chronic. Um, If you can teach a child before they've got, you know, before it's become something that's inducing any anxiety that, yeah, being shy is their superpower because they see the world a little bit differently because they move a bit slower um, in social environments. They're observing before they make a noise and um, that they're more honest. That's also a really interesting thing. Shy kids are always more honest. Um, Wow, I didn't know that. (laughs) Yeah, it just means that... um, yeah, that child is empowered with the belief that, yes, whilst I might find it harder to, yeah, put my hand up in class or ask for help or um, say when someone's upset me, there are other things that I'm really good at. And I can, I, uh, if, I'm, if I'm saying I'm the child, I am able to draw upon my superpowers and my strength to give me um, a bit of bravery when I need it in the environments that make me feel nervous or make me feel scared or make me feel a bit lost or make me feel different. Yes, I love that. And I love the fact that you're, yeah, we're talking about it in these terms because I know that for me as a kid and also the people who I've interviewed and spoken to about this project, um, so many times we've been told, don't be so shy, stop being shy. Like, I'm still told that now. Like, you can change it. Yeah. (laughs) And it means nothing, because what are you going to do? You're not going to stop being who you are. And it's very difficult to just switch it off. But I have always believed that there is a flip side to it. There's this, these inner strengths. And it's about teaching kids and adults how to tap into those strengths and to see it differently. I'd always remember when I was at work one time um, in my 20s and I was told that I didn't think like other people and it was as if it was there was something wrong with me (laughs) 
Oh my gosh. I know. And looking back on it now, I mean, it's, I've remembered that. I remember that meeting and being told that and I was kind of offended in some ways that they thought I was a weirdo or something, but actually, um, it's good to think differently because if we all acted and, um, if we all had the same thoughts and acted in the same way, then I just feel like the world would be a much blander place and people would have fewer ideas, less would get done. Um, and, and being different is a good thing. I agree entirely. I also think it's, um, I wonder if it's true or not, but I like to think it's true that we live in a society now where people are a bit more aware of the words that they use. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe also because we have this like glorification of people who are a bit out there and a bit unusual, like Elon Musk, that people now start, to, I, I think, feel like actually if you're different, then you have something to offer that the world doesn't. Um, but those words are also really wounding. Mm-hmm. Like they yeah, wound they you at the place which is really deep and where you're probably already a little bit raw and if you're somebody who's like battled with a sense of um feeling different your whole life because x y or z is not you know doesn't come to you in the way it does for so many other people um yeah it's it's just it's a it's a vicious thing to hear and I think again for a child to hear things like that like just you know just stop being so shy it's akin to saying you know oh don't cry dust yourself off get over it we would never dream of talking to a child like that in this day and age but people did all the time 20 years 30 years 40 years ago yeah I think things have changed thank goodness I mean even in daily life we're just labeling we're labeling things all the time that's how we move through the world so it's, it's unrealistic to say that but I think being cautious of how you use the word um, talking about it as if it's something, as if it's a word that doesn't necessarily come with good or bad. It just is what it is. And then having a conversation with other people who work with your child, for example, that might be teachers, tutors. If you have people, you know, around who are like family and friends, um, ask them to not make a big deal of the shy piece. Mm-hmm. And I think people do this well meaning all the time, but it's, it's well meaning, but it doesn't necessarily help. Like saying, um, oh he's so shy and then xyz and you know extending on that all that does is for the child it creates a narrative in their mind about all of the values associated with being shy yeah um, and once you've got people making comments like that it's it's almost impossible to control the narrative that's being created um, and and then you lead to a place of like self-fulfilling prophecy so I would be really careful with that I think um I think another thing that parents naturally do, and and it's not even just parents, it can be their older siblings too, and anyone who really cares for the child that we're talking about, is um, they'll go to, they'll want to rescue the child when they see the child struggling. Mm. Um, Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, because of course it's like this nurturing instinct takes over and and you don't want to see your child suffering. No, you don't. Um, I mean, as a mum, I know my son's not shy at all, but it's the equivalent for me of, you know, if he's injured in football, um, you have this sudden urge in your tummy that you need to hurdle the fence and run yeah. onto the field and be like, no. And be there with your plasters. Yeah, yeah, exactly and like, the and same. Then, but they don't want you to. They'd be. He would be. Abs- <laughs> if I did that, oh my gosh, he would be mortified. I, he'd probably never speak to me again. So, um, yeah, I'm not allowed to do that, <laughs> even though I want to. <laughs> no, so this is well. This is where I think it gets more complicated when we're talking about things around the mind. I think that with a smaller child, they would welcome you rescuing them. They would mm. welcome it in a heartbeat. But you don't want a child that becomes reliant on you to help them in scenarios which they find tricky so um I don't know if you know about the idea of a growth mindset it's become very fashionable recently yes in conversation tell us okay, so though, for, tell us about it so in a nutshell um to have a growth mindset means that you are in a position really to be learning more learning faster and becoming um closer to self-actualizing than someone who doesn't have a growth mindset um, growth, I think of growth mindset as being like a muscle and it sits on a spectrum. So you might have, 
you're almost like having like you have lots of muscles in your body your leg muscles might be really strong but your arm muscles not it could be that you have a growth mindset for if I'm talking you know in academic terms it could be that you have a growth mindset for maths but you definitely don't for literacy um and and then it can exist on any point on the scale you can have some something of a growth mindset or you can be completely closed or you can hugely have a growth mindset yeah um but we're increasingly seeing in the research around education that when children have a growth mindset around their learning they do better they improve faster they approach challenge um with more positivity rather than fear or avoidance um but if you get into a, a into a pattern of, of rescuing, I, I think it massively hinders your child's ability to learn how to navigate in the world. Um, and the, the social scenarios which they struggle in are only going to become more and more complex as they get older. Yeah, that makes so sense. Rather, mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I feel like I can hear you thinking, yeah, yeah. No, I yeah, think I know that feeling. <laughs> I do, I definitely do. And I think the temptation is to kind of helicopter over them and just make sure they're okay all the time. Um, right. But you have to see that they have to figure things out, don't they, for themselves. And I, I, I haven't done enough research into this. So I'd be fascinated to talk to shy parents with shy children not shy parents with shy children you know and for me I'm a shy person and my son he's just not shy at all I don't even understand how he's so loud it's honestly (laughs) surprising to me so there's things where he you know he'll do things and I'm thinking oh my god how is he doing that um and I just say nothing because I don't want to um inflict my sense of um self-consciousness on him um so it's in you know it's interesting isn't it how um it it's not always easy to understand your child I think what you said about the you know parents who don't have who parents who are not shy shy children for me that really it really comes back to the point that you said about people used to I mean people still do right but they'll say don't be so shy you can do it Mm -hmm. that's a perfect example of that right because it's just a total like disconnect between what you know to be true about your world and how you move in it and not understanding why your child moves so differently um yeah I think that's that and I I think the thing that parents can do regardless of like if if it's the uh you're shy your child's not or or vice versa or even if you're shy and your child's shy and you just want to help them help them to not struggle perhaps the way that you did um, with the things like the self-consciousness and the anxiety that comes with it it's that thing about celebrating all of the other facets of your child's personality don't make shy their defining feature mm-hmm. yeah um, okay so let's think about, being... can we think of an example for that so um so let's say your child is struggling um around I guess, say they do gymnastics and they struggle with the idea of the performance. They they find the the idea of doing the gymnastics in front of other people really difficult and it puts them off from doing gymnastics. What would we okay. do in that situation? Are we Do we celebrate the fact that they're really amazing at the moves and that they've practiced really hard, that kind of thing? Yeah. I would probably separate those two things um, regarding celebrating celebrating the other facets of their personality. And then um, I would consider the example you've given me more of an example of how to navigate a scenario, which is an absolute nightmare for a shy child. But we can consider both in the same example, if you like. Okay. So um, the first thing around celebrating all facets of their personality, I would draw upon the fact that they, yeah, that they love the gymnastics, that they're good at it that when it's hard, they keep going, they they try hard, they work hard, they overcome their obstacles. I would draw upon other things in their life too. So if if your little gymnast is also a dancer, I would like draw upon the fact that she's so, you know, she moves to music so well and she's got her sense of rhythm. And if she works hard at school and she's good at a certain subject at school, I would I would draw upon her efforts in that subject. If there are subjects which she struggles with, but she still works hard, I would bring that up. If her teacher always comments on the fact that 
she's a treasure to have in class. I would bring those things up. That's about celebrating all aspects of her personality. Even the fact, I mean, it might come down to the fact that even at home, she takes care of her siblings and she looks after, um, she looks after her younger siblings. Or maybe if she's playing with other children, she always, she always does the right thing. Those are like celebrating all facets of who she is and not getting, um, not getting tunnel vision about the fact that she's a gymnast and she has a situation she now needs to deal with. Okay. That's the personality piece. As far as de- how to deal with that scenario, um, and this is advice actually that any parent could take for navigating any scenario where there's lots of people, I would say it's about practicing. Yeah. Um, it's almost like a version of exposure therapy. So if there are lo- like lots of family parties that you go to, I might say go get there a little bit early so you're a part of the, the party building up rather than walking into this big explosion of people and noise and dynamics. Similarly, then, if you've got like this big, um, like a big gymnastics show coming up, are there ways to practice doing it small and then building up? So maybe that could start with practicing in front of mum and dad. Maybe that then means practicing in front of like a family, like the family of maybe five or six people. Then maybe it means asking the teacher if maybe she might be interested in doing a shorter session where perhaps some of the kids can do their piece in front of each other. And so you're building up your child's muscle to perform in front of so many people, but you're doing it gently. You're not doing it in a way that's going to massively overwhelm his or her nervous system. It's fascinating because with adults, um, with the adults in the shy and mighty society, that's exactly how we work. Um, it's really? about practice. Yeah, building up the muscles and it's, it's how I've been able to overcome the aspects of my shyness which have held me back or which I found challenging and it's really reassuring <laughs> to hear your advice is kind of along the same lines um, and that example is so specific and I can really see now how you can apply that to um, real life without it yeah. actually kind of freaking your kid out and making them get more anxious um it feels completely doable and you can see how just having a plan um and working on things step by step is really going to help um to you know it, it's like baby steps isn't it outside of your comfort zone bit by bit so that suddenly you find yourself oh look I did it and then you can go on to the next bit and the next bit and um I just don't like the idea that we're ever going to be throwing people in at the deep end um, of situations that then kind of can have a damaging, you know, a damaging right. um, impact and be one of those, you know, I, I'm interviewing people all the time who are shy as adults and who've overcome it um, or worked with it. And often there's a story from childhood. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah something that happened which um had turned like changed things for them so if we can do something to try and manage um that that experience so it it doesn't then have an impact for the next 20 or 30 years then that would be good right (laughs) I think the thing is I mean totally but also if you're thinking about doing it with children I agree totally wholeheartedly that Throwing kids into scenarios which they're just not equipped to handle is is poisonous. Um, But if you're doing this, you know, gradual increases in an ability to handle a challenging social situation, um, to handle the feelings that come with that anxiety, eventually, potentially, you've got a six-year-old who becomes an 18-year-old and is not scared to give speeches to big groups of people, rather than that that 18-year-old perhaps starting their journey of embracing their shyness at the age of 18. And it's that thing about the incremental progress. You never know who your child is going to be one day. Don't limit, don't limit their, the possibilities or the impact they might be able to make on, on themselves, but also the people around them because they have this label of shy. Yeah. That makes you assume. That's wonderful. Like wonderfully put. I, I think that just sums it up you know, we can do something about this so that as adults, we're not afraid of public speaking or presenting or socialising or networking Mm -hmm. or travelling or any of those things. It can be something which 
we work on like you work on gymnastics or you right. work on learning French or Spanish. It's just something that is perhaps um, more of a challenge for certain kids and with, with the right exercises and the right kind of support to become stronger and mightier and a little bit braver step by step. I feel like um, these things can be overcome and worked on to the point where they actually, they are a strength because if a quieter, more shy person learns how to present their ideas, they're still observing and um, Mm -hmm. absorbing and listening and doing all of those things that makes them them but then they have the power to share the ideas that they've come up with and that and the thoughts that they've had. And that's the real power, isn't it? That's where the magic happens. So it's interesting. I have, um, I didn't, have you heard about the theory of uh, highly sensitive people? Yes. (laughs) Okay. So for, I'll summarize it super quickly in case someone's listening and that they they don't know, Uh, but it's this theory slash idea um that approximately one in six of us um just experiences the world at a higher octave i guess if you like of um i'm phrasing it badly and it just with more emotion than the other five six so you're more likely to notice if the lights are brighter if the sounds are louder but you're also more likely to feel other people's emotions um, you're more likely to be able to cut into the nuance of a scenario. Um, same as shyness, if it's not nurtured correctly, it will 150% be the thing that um, destroys you because you're literally more sensitive to everything. But if it's nurtured correctly, it will be your superpower because you see the world in a way that most people don't and you experience the world in a way that people don't. And I was thinking before we we came on, I think that there's probably an interesting correlation between um, having experienced shyness in your life and being highly sensitive. Um, It definitely is. And it's something which um, we've discussed a little in the episode that we did with Marianne Campwell. So if you look that up, then um, we had a conversation. I think I know her, actually. We met a long time ago. Free Range Humans. Yes, Free Range Humans. And she's amazing. And we talked a little bit about highly sensitive people. So there's definitely, um, if you're interested in that, go check that episode out too. Um, I think it's true that um, there is some kind of link because if there's a Venn diagram and you've got introverts and shy people and highly sensitive people, there's kind of overlaps, isn't there, between some of these things. And um, I love the idea that if we can um, somehow harness that preference as a, in children um, mm. and teach kids how to work with it instead of feel like it's um a block or some sort of you know I've you know not um, a disability but a problem or a, something yeah. that needs fixing um learning that from a young age it's like the secret to unlocking amazing things yeah I think there's also value in I guess it's something that I, I, I think I said earlier in it's not treating it like it's the be all and end all defining feature of who you are Mm. um I guess initially um well before we spoke I'd I'd listened to a couple of other um episodes of of your podcast and you had said about you know to others about their experience of shyness and I was thinking about the fact that I was speaking to you today and I like I I internally chuckled because I was like I'm not shy at all but then I thought about it and actually, as a child, I was. Mm. And I'm, I wouldn't say, I don't think you grow out of these things, because like I said, I think there's a genetic predisposition. I do think it's biologically informed. And I see it in myself in certain scenarios. There will be scenarios that I go into, and I, I notice the way that I navigate it at the beginning. I'll want to sort of like size up where I am and what's going on before I throw myself in. Once I've thrown myself in, I'm very much so, like you said, your son. Like, I'm loud. and yeah. <laughs> You would not know I was there. Um, but that, that hint of it, I guess that hint of how a shy person navigates the world is, is still with me. 
And I just say that to say, uh, yeah, I wouldn't say that you grow out of shy tendencies, but you can come to a place where it's not the one thing that defines you, but it is a part of your toolkit in how you maximize your opportunity, how you maximize um, how you get the best out of life, how you um, become cognizant of how you think and you, you're able to appreciate how you think rather than thinking this is a thing that I have that's a problem or a mental disability or it's something I need to overcome. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, no, it's fine. You, you have such a great way of explaining things. <laughs> Oh, so thank you. <laughs> when you. The way you put it, it sounds that's exactly right. And I like, I really love the idea that it goes from being um, something that's seen as a problem or an obstacle and becoming uh, part of a toolkit or even a superpower. And I think if we can help our children to do that, um, that's the secret to all kinds of success and magic and brilliant things. And. <laughs> Oh, hang on, I have to co- just let that me, a guess? I just have to <laughs> open the door. One sec, hang on. I'll be back in two seconds. Is it- sure. <laughs> Sorry, that was just Jacob at the door. No. Um, right, <laughs> he's got a key. Wait, he like smashed on the door and the dog went mad. Okay, so we it's were just so funny though because finishing. <laughs> I was gonna say to you, I was gonna say that is not a small dog, and then you were like, "No, that's Jacob." And I was like, "Wait, no, I thought Jacob was your son." <laughs> oh no! So the dog was barking, the kid was smashing on the door. It's like my house is noisy for like a shy quiet person my house is full of noise <laughs> like loud stuff anyway if it's helpful is it I mean if I guess you're going to cut this piece out yeah I'll cut this um, bit I out. can I can comment if you like on also having a child who's shy and an extrovert oh that's interesting yeah because people don't think that that exists but it does <laughs> okay let me just ask you that question and then okay. we'll, and then I think we'll finish up because otherwise we're going to cool. like run out of time. Okay, so Natasha, I have one question for you. Do you think it's possible to be a shy extrovert? Yes, a thousand percent. Um, so I just told you, I guess, about myself. I'm for sure. Um, I I wouldn't identify as shy anymore, but I I think I once definitely was identified as being a little shy. And I am for sure an extrovert. So I know from my own experience um, or my own personal experience. Um, and then also I have for sure seen children who are extroverted and shy. It, I think what that, that comes down to that classic case of um, when you have a child and some people will say, he's not shy at all. And then others will be like, what are you talking about? He's mm-hmm. so quiet and shy. That, I think often when you get that case where it's that disconnect, where a child appears to be uh, quiet sometimes and other times very comfortable being loud, chatty, um, enjoys being around lots of other people, that's what you've got going on. Um, the problem is, I think, is that people assume that to be shy means that you're an introvert. Actually... To be shy is all of the things that we've talked about before, but to be an introvert is completely different. To be an introvert means that you need to be alone, or at least you need to have big amounts of alone time to recharge your energy. Mm -hmm. Whereas an extrovert recharges their energy when they're around lots of other people, or not even necessarily lots of other people, just other people. Um, And they really buzz when, when they're part of that dynamic rather than looking in on the noise. 
And I think and so it's, perfect. it's it's perfect. It's really interesting because I think that's me. I'm a shy extrovert, and so there I feel like that's the conflict. Um, because you yeah. want to be part of it, you want to be in the party. I'd quite like to be dancing and singing and having fun with everybody else. I just feel like I can't because I'm too shy. Um, and I'd love to be, you know, networking away and chatting to all the people, but you know that's the goal but the thing that I find the hardest is actually doing the thing I want so if I didn't want it I wouldn't care because I'd be at home like drinking cups of tea with the the dog and watching telly and I'd be perfectly content but you kind of want to be in the party having fun but you just feel resistance and fear around doing those things the word you use resistance is exactly it and that mm. resistance for you, I imagine, will have got stronger and stronger the older you got, the more that you were receiving messages. And um, it, it, it almost works like data, right? It's like your body's receiving data to keep telling you that your shy nature is wrong or mm. it's, it's not desirable. And so that's the thing that builds up a resistance in you where um, it's, it, what's really happening is it's your unconscious speaking to your conscious mind saying, well, look. Nadia we're safer if we just stay at home outside of it and then your conscious mind which is where all of your desire is sitting is saying but I want to go out and I want to be a part of it but your unconscious mind which has had this message so um so drilled into you and it's become so deep-rooted now it's like no it's safer to hide away and this is also why that whole message gets perpetuated that shy means introverted because I think this has probably happened oh I've lost my breath then um, because I'm not overexcited telling you, um, but this has probably happened for generations upon generations upon generations of people who are shy. Yeah, I think so, and I think it's confused because the outcome is the same. You stay at home, so one yeah. group of people, the introverts who are not shy, are happy to do that, and one group of people who are not happy to do that are still at home, but they just don't want to be. Yeah. Ah, yeah. suddenly it all makes sense. And, um, <laughs> oh, Natasha, this is so fascinating. I just, I'm so like inspired by my guests and by this podcast. I'm just learning so much. And I think I'm understanding more about myself and hopefully helping lots of other people to do the same. And now we're helping kids as well. And I think that's a brilliant, um, brilliant thing. And so if you're listening to this episode and you have a shy child um, or you're worried about your child in some way, um, how can we get hold of you, Natasha, so that you can come and help us? So, um, yeah, I would be delighted to help anyone who has heard this and and they feel like they need a bit of advice. So you can... um, Reach me via email, natasha at thevidagroup.com. Um, or you can go to thevidagroup.com forward slash shy. Um, and we've put together some resources for you. Uh, so whether you're a shy adult or you're a shy child, um, head on over and, and see what we have for you. Perfect. Thank you so much, Natasha. And I hope you've enjoyed this episode and listening to Natasha, who's been absolutely wonderful. And I hope that you'll join us again soon for another episode of Shy and Mighty. The Shy and Mighty Society is a safe place for shy people to shine. Learn specific techniques to help you improve your confidence and overcome limiting beliefs. Make quiet connections with people just like you. Coaching, support, and encouragement to coax you out of the shadows and help you reach your goals. Head over to shinemighty.com to find out more.